Hi, and welcome back to Chemistry Videos. We are going to be talking about kind of the structure of the class today. So um, if you're taking a chemistry class with me at CNM right now, or if you have another chemistry class that you take somewhere else, um, this might apply. Let's see what's going on. All right, so in terms of the chemistry class, I engage in what we call active learning on an educational level. And so let's talk about what that is. It has a before class component. The before class component happens obviously before class. That's why we call it that. There's an in class component, which for my blended classes is not um, really true because we're never truly in class at a specific time. And then there is an after class component. And we could call this pre-class, post-class, so on and so forth. Okay, so considering these three pieces, what we're aiming for in active learning is that you are active when you're actually doing the class. Okay, so what that means is that you're doing things. You are engaging in problems. You are working with other people to figure out what's going on in terms of the test and in terms of applying it to your life. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that if you're active in class, you have to have some preparation done before class happens, right? So for us, what this is gonna mean is reading uh, the book or whatever you're gonna use. Right, there's a couple of um, online books. There's OpenStax books. Certainly the book we're using, which is Tro, third edition, would be great as well. So you're reading the relevant chapters from the book. That might be chapter one. That's how I've labeled it on the game plan. But it could also be, you know, you could think about it as the introduction to chemistry or the math of chemistry and maybe watch video lectures. And if I were doing this, I would not necessarily read the book first. I would read the book after I've watched the relevant video lectures. And yes, I realize that I put reading in present tense and watched in past tense, sorry. All right, so um, in terms of thinking about this, watching the video lectures is kind of where I would go first, because that distills down whatever your professor wants you to know, your teacher wants you to know, in terms of what they think is important. And then you go back to the book, you look at the examples that have been worked out, and you maybe put your paper over the, ex the worked out part, look at the example, try it out, and then see what happens in terms of matching your work to the work that is actually in the book, okay? So read the book and or watch, we'll put an and, or watch the video lectures. And chemistry, like so much as science, is about doing. So that's why I'm saying don't even spend your time really totally reading every single piece of the book. Do stuff, do problems first. And then after that, we're gonna have a reading quiz. The reading quiz, is on Mastering Chemistry. Okay, so it's on masteringchemistry.com. Uh, no, it's not on masteringchemistry.com. I'm sorry. It's on um, Modified Mastering, which is through Blackboard Learn. All right, so the reading quiz is meant to test what you know. So did you get anything from the video lectures and or reading the book? And those are due for every chapter. And they're due generally the night before class happens. So they're due by 11.59 p.m. the night before class. That's the general idea. So that you're checking right before class happens whether you got it or not. Okay. Along with this, sometimes we also have what we call a muddy point. If a reading quiz is to talk about what you know, a muddy point is to ask you, what do you still not know? And the idea of a muddy point, a lot of people get confused about this, is that if knowledge is clear, then where is it muddy for you? So where is it kind of confusing for you? Okay, we're not gonna do a muddy point um, this semester necessarily in all of my classes. Most of my classes are doing exit tickets, which incorporate the muddy point, and that'll be after class. So we'll talk about that in a minute. 
after before after you do the before class stuff, you obviously go into class. Isn't that awesome? It's so cool. All right, so in class, what we're going to do is we're going to do some learning catalytics. Learning Catalytics is a program that's kind of like clickers. So for a long time, I did, I'm moving out of the way so you can see it really nicely. Um, for a long time, I did clickers. Clickers are awesome, except they're always multiple choice questions. Um, and to be a multiple choice question, you have to give the answer somewhere in there. And since this is such a math oriented class, I was like, I need you to be able to figure out the answer on your own and tell me whether it's right or not. So Learning Catalytics, Catalytics lets me do that. It's on smart devices and it's online. It also allows me to ask a huge amount of other kinds of questions. So labeling graphs, um, la having some kind of drawing so we can actually draw Lewis dot structures and such. Very cool program. All right, so we're gonna do Learning Catalytics to kind of test what we um, know in terms of applying it a little bit further in terms of the exam. For the online classes, so the blended classes, your learning catalytics comes, I can actually offer that, but that's just gonna be kind of like after you've read the book and watched the video lectures and done the reading quiz, then do the learning catalytics for that chapter to kind of integrate your knowledge. And then after that, you'll do the after class component. So you'll do the exit ticket and the mastery chemistry. So you're gonna do this a little bit differently for every class that you, or every chapter that you're covering, you're kind of moving through all three pieces and then beginning again for the next chapter. Okay, learning catalytics is one of my favorites. Um, we're also gonna do some case studies to apply our knowledge. Um, those case studies are based off of real life examples. So, um, you know, if we were doing unit analysis, let's talk about what's needed in terms of medication for a hospital patient or something along those lines. Um, that's just an example, by the way. <laughs> totally could be so much more complex than that. Um, and then we also sometimes do worksheets. And those worksheets might include, you know, an, a, a CAD applications. They could include all kinds of possibilities. Great problems that I thought were worth talking about. That's kind of what we're doing. In class, if you're taking, if you have any kind of in-class component, these are generally done in groups, right? The groups, I tend to let you self-select at the beginning, and then you um, kind of, it depends on how it goes, right? So self-select, you guys are working, you're getting questions right, that's awesome. Even if you decide to be an island, if you're still getting questions right, it's okay. If you guys stop talking to one another and our islands and are not getting the questions right, that's when we have a problem and that's when I start assigning groups. So beware. Um, in terms of the blended class, you guys don't really have groups. So this is where you're going to communicate with your classmates. And the way we're going to do communication for all of the classes is through the Pi app, which you can look up um, on the syllabus. That is a free application, which allows me to, um, it basically is like social media just for the class. And for my blended classes, for the general chemistry one blended classes, you are integrated with the hybrid class, which has a few different things going on. But I did that because the hybrid class tends to know what more of what I've said because they have me in class once a week. So that's why that's the way it is. Okay, so you would ask your uh, peers on PIAP about any of these and say, hey, I'm confused about this. Can you help me out? You would also ask, by the way, Emily. Emily is the SI, right? So supplemental instructor. Emily is an awesome resource. Please use her. She is so helpful on so many levels, including mastering chemistry and learning catalytics. She's helped me for <laughs> two years in a row now, has upper level biochemistry major, totally worth talking to. All right, and then after class, after class, we're going to do a couple of things, right? We're going to do an exit ticket.
The exit ticket is a combination of a survey, a short survey. It's like an eight question survey. The eight question survey is to study affect. So affect is a educational term, which means kind of how you're looking at the class and all of the stuff that you have in terms of emotions and other things going on as you come to class, okay? There, it's also looking towards engagement. So are you getting anything out of the class? Are you engaged at all? Is this working for you? All right, so that's kind of the sense. At the end of the exit ticket is the muddy point for the either the time that you just did or for the next time. Ideally, it would be for the next time. So the exit ticket, you would do this eight problems, and then at the end of that, you would have the muddy point, and you would say, hey, I'm still confused about this, even though we just went over it. Or you would say um, something along the lines of, I'm, I'm confused, I've already looked ahead, and I'm confused about this. Okay, all right. Those ex exit tickets are due by 11.59 p.m. the day of class. So this is due the day before class. So reading quizzes are due before class. Exit tickets are due by 11.59 the day that class happens. For the blended classes, you don't have a class that happens, so we're going by the hybrid schedule, and the hybrid meets um, whenever they meet. Okay, um, and then, uh, and you can find, by the way, when they, you can find all of these due dates, <laughs> if you're wondering about whether they meet or not. Yes, they actually meet. They meet on different days, depending on the semester. You would find all of these due dates and exactly when everything is due on the game plan at the top of every learning module. All right, exit ticket is the first thing, and then mastering chemistry homework. The mastering chemistry homework, that's due across the board at the same time for everyone. That's due by 11.59 p.m. on Sundays. Squeaky. All right, so 11.59 p.m. Sundays. You can guarantee that you will have something due pretty much every week of the semester. And then after you've done that stuff, you go back to the beginning, the pre preparation for the next class. And that's how this goes. That's the flow. Okay, so having said that, why do I do this the way I do it? The reason why I do active learning as opposed to um, doing just lecturing in class is because one, I have the video lectures, so I've already lectured quite a bit on all of these things. And then the other piece is that I find applying the material much more interesting and it's been shown in studies to really help solidify knowledge in a much more concrete kind of way. And so that's why we're doing things the way we want, we're doing them. Um, in class, you might have seen my slide that talks about what CEOs want, um, and that is also partially why we're doing these things the way we're doing it. CEOs want you to have leadership skills, they want you to have problem solving skills, they want um, you to have ability to have written communication that's actually coherent, and they also want you to be able to work in teams. That's the top four things that CEOs uh, of Fortune 500 companies wanted when the survey was done. And that is a big deal, guys. That's not, those are all things that you don't necessarily get when an instructor is lecturing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on all of those things. We're gonna work on problem solving skills in the midst of class. And after class, we're gonna work on some teamwork. That's why we're doing the groups. Leadership comes in the midst of the teams and written verbal communication skills, those kinds of things um, are really gonna come in the midst of the exit tickets. All right, that sounds like a good time. I'm looking forward to it. I'll see ya when we get to class or online. Until next time.